bit. So that's why I like to say, they don't fix anything together. Why you have that perspective? For the person who's putting that puzzle together, I just wish the teammates who's coming together, who you bring it together, realize that this is just for now. Let me not be selfish. And yes. let's build for now because at the end of the day, if I just focus on now within the moment, I'm going to have my own stage. But I got to crawl before I walk. And honestly, I'm not going to be crawling for fucking be, long. Have, and then the but show you up. have to recognize what your corner piece is versus the center piece is. So how do you recognize that? Oh, have you, have you before, come up with your own formula for recognizing it? Hey, we are. And it wasn't an overnight thing. It was literally being burned from a situation and recognizing that you are only good for this thing. You are never good at this thing. So what, what? And recognizing in your relationships that these pieces fit with these pieces, but there's still a middle piece that is separating the two. It's a jigsaw. It's, so, it's, it's the middle, so you... You got to so with that middle. Yeah, my superpower right, is being a, a facilitator. Uh -huh. It's like having a jigsaw puzzle, 4,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. Opening the box, dumping it out, and everybody in the puzzle never seen the picture on the box. But I have the box. In my head, I have the box. You see, you see so the I see pieces. the big picture. I'm a big picture person. I'm like, I'm not the best at small, intricate details. Relationships and empathy and feelings between entities is not my strong suit, but I can recognize what their capabilities are and what your capabilities are. And I'm just like, oh no, these pieces into a lot. I might not be able to do it myself, but I can introduce one to the other. That's my superpower. I mean it. And I have yeah. to recognize that. But what, I'm not actually basically, like, what moment happened? All right, so for for an example, I um I started that process. The process, well, you at now? I started that. I started that process in August. And the last this day year? I was no, yeah, July. After June, July, I'm gonna go home because but the pieces were there. The pieces was there, but the pieces was acting up. I'm, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna listen to me because if I don't go in this moment and listen to myself, I'm gonna fuck up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna revert to what I was, and then so. But I had that moment, I, I said, no, I'm just my spouse. This is my spouse, I went home and followed this path, and that's what we got now. <laughs> I've been obedient. I learned the concept of obedient. But that's also where I started recognizing, you're, like, I have always rocked with you from day one since we met. Right. We met in some weird circumstances, <laughs> but not for nothing, yeah. under the circumstances that, that we met, you are the only person I still fuck with. Like, I fuck with everybody, but the way I fuck with you is not the way I fuck with everybody else. And you wouldn't know that's so crazy because I knew half of the mother before. But yeah. the same two I knew before going into who I've been strong with, the same two of is besides adding you to it, you know what I'm I, I took the initiative to even reach out like, hey, since you do this, yeah, it's been a little couple months since this happened, since this tour, let's do this. Motherfucker gonna say, yeah, that bitch out. I was playing basketball with the mayor. Mayor of the city, the mayor of motherfucking Atlanta, Atlanta Andre Dickens. And I asked one of the niggas that went on tour with us, because he said he played ball, asked me, say, yeah, they a bitch out. And I didn't even care about playing. I was like an asshole out there. Asshole in the thing that you do. Yeah. And a lot of people make confidence over arrogance. Facts. And cockiness. Yeah. Cockiness is different from arrogance. Yeah. I learned that shit you my goddamn favorite artist. <laughs> Arrogant, I learned that shit. And that's always been my big thing. I will dismiss people before I give them a chance. Wow. That's crazy, I'm the opposite. I give them a chance. That's crazy. But I'm so, not. So do you still do that though? No, absolutely okay. not. I just recognize what it is that their capabilities are. Up front, I compartmentalize. I guess what I'm trying. So I'll put them in the, this is what you do, this is the compartment that, part, uh, compartment that you're in, mm -hmm. and you'll be there. And then I'll get into another stage, and that's another compartment that somebody else is in. But when these two things are back to back, it's like the Titanic. Yeah. So I'm going to give you an example. I think. I'm, I'm getting better at my question. So it's like a, for example, right? If a person, so you see a videographer. 
Well, a person who want to be a big yard. But you see, he's better at the credit, whatever. Yeah. How would you navigate that person to doing credit? To get away from the videography, but to master credit real quick, and then use the videography. What do you mean by credit? Okay, like just credit. Say you fix credit. Okay? So say this is the, the, say we got okay. Charles, Charles, Charles says that he's a videographer, right? But Charles, strong no. suit is credit. Let me, I can break this down. Okay, bet she get it. All right, let me go. Now I get it. Okay. So, what you want to do and what you can do. The person who is good at, who wants to do videography but is good at credit are two separate entities. Not to them, but to you. Because you can recognize what their strengths is and you recognize what they want to do. And people will always be more passionate for their wants. The right side. That's how you know I got so you used to pull it and then I can't even tell you how long I did that. <laughs> but that's a lot of it. You gotta go back to the basics. Yes. And I learned hey like this mad what funny. What you wanna do and what you can't do. What you wanna do and what you can do, the the bridge. You have to find somebody who can complete the bridge for you. Yeah. I'm the person who can complete the bridge. What you want to do and what you can do, you are a videographer. You want to be a videographer, but you can do credit. I'm going to find a nigga who's a master videographer who can do credit repair. So you want to deal with that person who. Yeah, no. no. What I do is capitalize. Yes, Lord. You got to capitalize on the need. You're great at this, but y'all have a common goal. So now, how do you respond now? The average ill will call you a puppet master or opportunist. How would you respond to that? But I, I see you as capitalizing. And that's what you're supposed to capitalize. Capitalizing on and opportunists are one and the same word. Yes, Lord. You know what you do? Not be fucking offended. You can't be offended by somebody recognizing you yes, Lord. strategically placing people together. And I've been called a, an opportunist or a capitalist. And I've been offended by it. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, I'm not self-serving. I'm serving everyone else's need. It's not about me. If I benefit from the need served by both parties, that is smart. Yes. That That's is, why I'm not being taken advantage of. Because a lot of people get in this situation and they're like, I did this for this person, I did this for that person. No. Oh. I took nothing from it and this, this, and that. I don't do it. For me, I do it for everyone to succeed. And, at the, and my end goal is for everyone to profit, including myself. Everyone needs to profit from their relationships. These are, what, circumstances? They're not circumstantial, but. Go ahead. But they're, they're not circumstantial. I'm so technicality because they get circumstantial. The reason why I say that. They're transactional. Transactional and, and both really. Because circumstantial, because. Me personally, I'd be like, we don't live, we, I mean, we're not gonna live forever. We all go down. So it's technically circumstantial and temporary. But no, it is transactional and um, it always has to do with money. I think people confuse with benefiting. Treating a relationship is trans is recognizing. Wait, treating? Treating a relationship as transactional um, is not a bad thing. It's just not. recognizing the opportunity at hand and calling it an opportunist is not a bad thing. It's like, it's not a bad word. No, it's not. I'm just like, what do you mean it's a bad thing because I, I I took an opportunity from one person to the next to make it beneficial for all. Why is that a bad thing? True. Calling someone an opportunity as an opportunist is not derogatory. Fuck it's right. Then if I take the opportunity now, it can be a more opportunity. Later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's called an opportunity. Yes, Lord. And especially called the man, and I'm the fucking supply this time. <laughs> so, yes, what are we talking about? Why are you upset? You're upset because you can't personally capitalize on the relationship, though. You feel? And that's why I be feeling like you wish You didn't recognize it. <clears throat> you didn't recognize it and figure out a way to monetize it. Facts. And then now, instead of you being mad, if you had an idea, if it struck you before you, but you didn't act on somebody else, so you didn't even fucking feel it. Go to that person, and then next time, learn too. Learn from, uh, next time I have an idea. Yeah. And I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Because like, everybody who... Because they only want the opportunity for themselves. Damn. 
I feel that. I see that. I see that so much fucking. Like right now in this space, I ain't seen in this city for a long time. Two things that I learned bad to you. in my most immediate past mm -hmm. was that, what was it? Fuck, it's two turns. God damn. <laughs> With that being said, hey man, y'all done tuned into the hey, the Heard You podcast. Yeah. I heard you, heard you. <laughs> yeah, it's what we sitting right here with your host, HQ Mark, and our beautiful guest, one of the greatest DJs in Atlanta right now. Matter of fact, the whole motherfucking world, DJ Tsunami. Yes, Lord. The owner of Big Wave, because I ain't a lie. She had to be a wave, y'all. Yes, Lord. Yes. I gotta give her her flowers to get with. Met her on tour, she did her tour for other bigger artists. Right now, she she is the one of the founders of Rebel T, Rebel T, Rebel Lady. Are you the owner? No. Okay, please. Okay. I'm merely an executive account manager for Rebelity. Go ahead. Talk your shit. Merely. I'm the founder of Big Wave, which is where about value. Because we big, yes, we're making noise, and doing what we say we do on our resumes, and connecting people and our frequencies to make sure we go louder. Go harder, go bigger, go louder. Yes, Lord. Anyone act like, I think, I think I'm gonna start just, I think after that, they don't let people just allow them to take over and introduce themselves. Yeah. We're gonna do that differently. So I'm just, this yeah. Just I'm gonna say little old. Little old. But I, I respect it though. You're not putting yourself over or beyond. It's people. not because, like I was saying, it's about what creates the waves, and the waves is literally one drop at a time. Yes, I have just one singular drop in an entire wave. You gotta move like water. Gently said it first. <laughs> Hey, that's crazy. You know what? That's funny as hell. I had a dancing short on my for the uh, last motherfucking dance show. Mr. Hell, I never forget. 